Good morning guys, welcome back. I wanted to do another video on Card Sphere. My last video, my friends were asking, hey, what the heck is heart card sphere? How do I use it? Um, you know, I'll link to the actual website in the description this time, along with a crash course video I found done by Efren. Really good few minute video, describes exactly what Card Sphere is. But essentially for me, I know it to be a Magic the Gathering trading website where users list their inventory of tradable cards and other users will list cards that they want. So users will trade at a low rate of like 1% transaction fee. Super easy to use. I have no affiliation with the website. However, I just love using it. I've been using it for almost two years now and I just love it. So what I wanted to do was share with you how I transport my card sphere cards. So somebody want, out there wanted a foil Lord Wind Silver Gill Adept at Near Mint. So the first thing I do is I pull it from the inventory and I'll overlook the condition. As you can see, it's really nice. No surface scratches or dings. Um, we'll check the edges, the corners. Good solid Near Mint. Next, I'll put it in a sleeve, penny sleeve or an actual regular sleeve. Since this is the only single card I'm sending, the thicker sleeve will work with uh, the top loader I'm going to use. I'll typically throw it in upside down so that the opening of the sleeve will go in first. And since uh, you want to use a slim top loader for just a single card, it'll give it a nice snug fit. As you can see here, I've been collecting over the years some different top loaders that have different sizes. So your your thicker one's gonna be able to hold more cards and that there's just different sizes. So you wanna choose accordingly with what you're sending. Um, I think used top loaders are great. They sometimes break, but you know, if it's got a little bit of tape on there, no big deal. Um, keep them, use them again, it's fine. Next, the reason why we went and sent the card upside down was so that when we put this tape on there, the tape never actually touches the card, right? So if the card were to, to push out from that inner sleeve, it's never going to touch the tape. So as you can see, I put a little bit on both sides. We'll go over that a little bit later, but seal that top there. So the, the little bit extra allows for a tab so that when the receiver actually gets the card, this tape comes off really easy. It's not that sticky scotch tape that you have a tough time taking off. This comes off super easy. And then on the front, we have just enough space for the order number. So when this person ordered several silver gill adepts and foil, and another user sent him the same exact card, and you know he's trying to figure out which one this is, it's easy for him. You know, the order number's right on there. We'll stick it in the envelope and send it on its way. A little bit about the envelopes. I like using this size. Um, it's just big enough so that the US Postal Service actually accepts it. So if you do anything smaller, like something that's just the size of the top loader, they won't accept it. It won't go in the sorting machine. I've had this issue before. You, you have to, this is about, I think the smallest you can go before the uh, Postal Service, you know, will decline it essentially some people use larger ones and they'll go ahead and like tape the top loader to the inside of the envelope i think that's a great practice nothing wrong with that but uh essentially seal it up send it on its way and it's good to go next um you know we'll go over hey so the person will get it oh wow there's my silver gill adept from order number such and such they'll be able to tear off the tape's super easy because it's just that masking tape and it'll come right out. He'll check his condition of the card, verify it's the right set and condition and mark it received on his end. And that's how I package my orders through Cardsphere. Um, hopefully this video is helpful for people who use not just Cardsphere but TCG Player and they want to package their cards in a safe and efficient way. Uh, stay tuned because I want to do another video on how to send, you know, many cards like 15, 30, or even 100 cards. What's the most cost efficient way to do that? 
I will cover that. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching. See you next time.